Hello all, and welcome back. Now that we have the LCD working, let's talk about the implementation of the components in the final system. We could design one large board and combine all of those discrete components onto it, just like the 8-bit computers of the late 70s and the early 80s. However, that would constrain us to designing a new board each time we wanted to add or change a subsystem component. Or we could use the design of the PC which includes a motherboard that contains the CPU, ROM, and RAM, and then uses expansion slots to add functionality as needed. And this would be a good design if we had a design and knew where we were going with it. But for our purposes, which is just to experiment, I think the best approach is to have a simple backplane with multiple slots that we can mix and match any components that we want. This gives us the flexibility to design new functionality on a self-contained board, and plug it into the backplane for proof of concept and testing. For example, I still want to add a timer function and a keyboard interface. With the backplane design, I can get the backplane built, add the CPU and the memory card, and then get rid of all these wires, making testing a lot more efficient since I don't have to worry about one of these connections coming loose while testing the new functionality. So that is what I'm going to do over the next few videos. Design the backplane and the CPU and the memory cards, and then order the cards, assemble them, test them, and integrate it with the breadboard so I can continue to develop more modules. Each module will have discrete functionality that can be tested on its own and then integrated into the whole system. And to recap, these are the modules that I've built on the breadboard so far. I've got the clock reset module, the CPU, the RAM, ROM memory, and the LCD. I'll put the clock and the reset and the CPU on the same board. Since most of those won't change going forward, it's a pretty safe bet to have them all on the same card. The memory will be on a card of its own, as will the LCD. As I mentioned, I want to add a timer and a keyboard interface, which each will be their own card. So that right there is five cards. So we'll need at least five slots on our backplane. But if we want to be able to continue to build new functionality, we'll need a way to interface with the breadboard. Plus, we'll want to have some room for growth. Taking all of this into consideration, my initial thought is to design a 7-slot backplane. We can use the extra slots to jumper to breadboards using the jumper wires, or install new cards as we design and build them. But before we get into all this, I want to show you some of the programming I've done on our system. I've modularized the source code and added some basic routines for the LCD, as you can see here in this video. So, here's the source code. As you can see, I've cleaned it up a little bit, and I've split it into two different files, pony80.asm and lcd.asm. The pony80 file holds the main code for the system, and the lcd file holds the functions that control the lcd. This makes it a little more elegant and gives us a better way to maintain our code in the future. So to review our source code, in this section we are copying memory from ROM into RAM, and then turning off the ROM. Next, we're performing the power on self test, which writes and then reads in each memory location, looking for any memory faults. If there is a memory fault, we jump to this code to display the memory location of the fault, and then we halt. Heh, <laughs> that rhymes. Otherwise, we jump down to main, where we display the hello world message, initialize the A and the B registers, and then start our main loop. In this main loop, we display the current value of the stack pointer to line 2 of the LCD, move back to line 1, and then we delay. The sleep subroutine is nothing but a counter. We load the accumulator with the number of times we want to count to 255, and then the sleep function takes the accumulator and counts to 255 that many times. This is just a way to slow things down, but it is dependent on the clock speed. The amount of time each of these loops takes is a lot less for a 10 MHz clock versus a 1 MHz clock. Keep that in mind as we start talking about adding a timer card into the system. Next, we decrement the B register and check to see if it's zero or not. If it's not zero, then we call the LCD scroll function. The LCD supports scrolling by passing in this byte to the LCD. If bit 3 is a 1, the LCD scrolls right and if it's a zero, it scrolls left. So I created the LCD scroll function to look at the accumulator, roll it left twice, and then OR it with this value. That gives us the values needed to scroll left or right. 
Now back here in our main loop routine, if the value of b is 0, then we load the C register with a 1 and XOR it with the accumulator. This flips the lowest bit to the opposite of what it currently is, so a 1 becomes a 0 and a 0 becomes a 1. This functions as a reverse on the scrolling, so if it's scrolling right it begins scrolling left and vice versa. That way we can move the message back and forth. So let's get back to designing our backplane. I struggled a bit on showing me drawing out the schematics on this video and decided against it. But if you'd like to see me go through the entire process of drawing these out, let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to do that in a new video. So the schematic that I came up with to create the backplane includes the power supply. You can see that in the top right. It includes an LM7805 5 volt voltage regulator. Rather than rely on a third party external power supply, I decided to include this in the backplane. This allows me to use any DC power supply between 8 and 20 volts, and it outputs up to 1.5 amps at 5 volts. That should be plenty for our needs. The seven slots are 40 pin female connectors with all of the pins connected between the seven. This means I can plug any card into any slot. I did not include all the pins from this CPU. The refresh and the halt will not be needed. So those two pins are open for other uses. I also included capacitors to smooth out the power supply for the individual cards. And this is a pretty simple board, it won't take much to assemble. You can see from the layout that the components are very straightforward. I only included two of the capacitors, I felt that was enough since the capacitors are also going to be on the individual boards. Plus I uh, added some pins so we can uh, add a power switch and an LED indicator. Uh, if we ever put this into a case. If you remember from a couple of videos ago, you'll remember the uh, CPU clock reset circuit. This is the uh, schematic for that. Um, so I went ahead and I converted that to a PCB layout, which we've got right here. This was a bit more challenging to design. As you can tell, there's a lot more moving parts and I kind of had to play around to get all these in a position to where it would route uh, correctly. Um, and in case you're wondering, I use the auto routing on the um, on the layout. Um, I figure with something, you know, I'm just playing around with it. It's not going to be that big of a deal at this point. Um, if I was designing, you know, a, a true production computer, I would probably hand route these. So let's take a look at the auto routing functionality. I've removed all of the routes and I'm left with the copper ground area on the bottom of the board. The copper area on the bottom, which is the blue filling here, is the ground plane. When I auto route, it will redraw all of the connections and then refill the ground plane. To prepare for this, I placed all of the components on the board, and then, kind of like putting a puzzle together, I move the components around until I get a pretty optimal routing between the pins. I'm going to do a full video on the layout so you'll be able to see that in detail in the near future. Once I had the components I was happy with, I clicked the auto route, and then using the online router, I let the program do its magic. So if I click here, you can see it's trying all these different layouts to get all of the connections in place without a short circuit. And there, now it's complete. It's run 165 connections and added 26 vias through the board. And then once I click on OK, it'll rebuild the copper area ground plane. And there we have it. So if I go up here on the top in the menu and I click on uh, 3D, you can see the uh, 3D layout of the board. This board was a bit challenging since it has all of the data and address lines from the CPU plus all of the control pins. But there you have it. It's the CPU clock reset module. Here we have the memory module. This board will contain the RAM and the ROM, plus the circuitry to switch between RAM and ROM. And if we switch over to the uh, PCB view, you can see how I've laid out the board. Again, I'm using a ground plane on the back of the card. If I switch to 3D mode, you can see the actual layout, both front and back. And finally, we have the LCD module.
So the next step is to get all these uh, sent off to uh, have the boards made, wait for the shipping, and uh, then uh, we can put them all together. So I'm going to uh, take a break here. It'll probably feel like a few seconds to you, but hopefully uh, within the next couple of weeks, I'll get these boards uh, manufactured and get them delivered to me, and we can put them together and test them. So looking forward to it. Okay, and here we are. We have new boards. So let me get these open here, and we'll take a look at what we have. Uh, this is the back plane, obviously, so uh, let me work on getting this package open. They're vacuum sealed, so opening these is a bit of a challenge sometimes, but uh, I'm actually glad they take this much care, although it is a pain in the neck to get it open. Okay, here we go. Let me get this out of here. Come on, there we go. All right, and uh, here is uh, the backplane board. Space for seven slots, the uh, capacitors, uh, space for the power supply over here. All right, looks good. Now let's uh, move on to the uh, CPU clock uh, reset board. And uh, Get that open up. Okay. You can see the uh, the ground plane here on the back. All right, and that's the uh, the CPU module. The ground plane, and now uh, let's do the uh, memory module. Get that cut open. Oh, don't want to cut that silica gel. All right, All right and. This is uh, the memory module. And you can see I silk screened on there the uh, address and the uh, value for uh, enable disable. Now let's finally do the uh, LCD module. All right. And there's the uh, LCD module, and you can see I still screened on the address for the jumpers. All right, and that's everything. So, uh, yeah, in the next video, uh, I'll start assembling these, and uh, we can get them tested, ready to go. We have lots to do. Look forward to seeing everybody, and thank you for joining me, and uh, I'll see you next time.